people search for Jesus and think that they found him. But in the end, they're going to realize one thing. They didn't find him, find him, find him, find him. Many people search for the truth and never find it. But if you want to know the truth about God, what we got to do, we got to be the whole. Good afternoon, and welcome to the Word of Truth, the program that's designed to help you understand your Bibles. My name is Brother Obadiah. I'll be your teacher today, and reading for me will be Brother Brian. And as always, we bring you a topic from the scriptures on this TV program. And today's topic will be the purge and conversion. The purge and conversion. And what this lesson is, is, is we're going to show in this lesson is that once you have faith, once you have established your faith, that is not the end of your walk into salvation. That is not the only thing that you have to have to get eternal life. Faith is just the beginning. But all of us, as the scriptures say, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. We, we, all, have, we all have sinned. So we have to be purged from our old sins. And over the process of time, we have to be converted into servants of God. That is how the process happens. It does not begin and end when you confess Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That is not the end of it. And the thing about that is, is when you start to believe that or when that is taught, then you are not teaching the person or the people that they have to clean up themselves, they have to destroy that old man, and they have to be converted. Mm -hmm. And being converted is not a one-day event. People think being converted means because you uh, have a good feeling and, and confess the name of Jesus. No, being converted is something that is a lifelong, uh, a lifelong process because we have to, day by day, slowly but surely, grow into the service that the Lord uh, requires us to be. But we're going to start this off at Hebrews 12, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Hebrews 12, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get it, go ahead. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Now, he said this sin which doth so easily beset us. Sometimes we get high-minded. Sometimes we forget that, hey, we was out there living in sin, dealing with the lust of the flesh, and sometimes we forget that it's easy for sin to come on you. All you have to do is just get, get a little lax, and next thing you know, you done the committed sin. Now you got to repent. So this sin, it, it, it easily besets us because man, the mind of a man is very fragile. And when we come under pressure, when we come against obstacles, against temptations, sometimes, hey, you don't, you don't choose the right thing. Go ahead. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. That's, not, that's why he said, let's run this race with patience. Because this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. You have to be patient. We have to run this race day by day, always being in remembrance of who we're supposed to be. Go ahead. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Because when he was manifested in the flesh, his death didn't come quick. Mm -hmm. He had to suffer. Because he was showing us that, hey, you're going to have to suffer things before you can obtain that perfection, that, that eternal life. We're going to suffer some things. The book tells you that all who are going to live godly in Christ Jesus are going to suffer persecution. That's right. It didn't say some of us, it said all of us. Mm -hmm. So him suffering like that was letting you know that hey, this ain't gonna be no this ain't gonna be no instant instant gratification thing. This is something that we just gonna have to we gonna have to struggle through sometimes. We're gonna have to grind it out, as they say, until the time of salvation. Go ahead. Verse three. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied. And faint in your mind. He said, look, now consider what he went through unless you be weary and faint in your minds. Listen, he endured it, so we got to endure it. Go ahead. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Listen, we ain't resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Ain't mm -hmm. nobody bust your head. 
Ain't nobody, ain't, ain't nobody, you know, tied you up and beat you or, or, or put a pistol to your head for preaching. Mm -hmm. You ain't resisted on the blood. So why are you crying? Why are we complaining? He resisted unto death. Mm -hmm. The prophets and the apostles, a whole lot of them resisted unto death, unto be, being, being put in jail, you know, uh, 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 being, you know, beat up and everything else. But they continued to preach the gospel in the face of death. We haven't done that. Most of us have not done that yet. All we've done is we go out there, we might have a couple of debates, and then it's over with. Mm -hmm. But it ain't the same thing with somebody chasing you down, with a mob chasing you down with a bunch of bricks in their hand trying to bust your head. That's a whole different story. But he said, look, you have not resisted under blood striving against sin. What we doing right now is child's play compared to what the prophets and the apostles had to go through. Mm -hmm. But this is a race that has to be run with patience. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 6. 1 Corinthians 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 6. Can you get it? Go ahead. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Now this leaven, this is sin. And a little bit of sin turns into a whole lot of sin. Because once you start to get away with, a look, with doing wrong, then you're going you're gonna to step it up. You're going to try to do some more wrong and do some more wrong. You're going to do all the wrong you can as long as you're getting away with it. But he's letting you know the little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Go ahead. Purge out therefore the old leaven. That ye may be a new lump. Notice he said, look, purge out therefore the old leaven that you may be a new lump. Purge out that old man. The man that, 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 that dwelt with the lust of the flesh. The man that lived in sin and probably was de de delighted in living in sin because he profited from it. But he said, purge out this old leaven. See, most people want to stop at faith, but they don't want to purge nothing out of themselves. Mm hmm all they want to do is be the same person I am, and then you go to church one day of the week, and you want to sing songs and clear your conscience for, for a few minutes, and then you go about your life again. Mm -hmm. But this is not what the Lord commanded us to do. He's telling you, purge out that old leaven that she may be a new lump. You're supposed to be a new creature. Go ahead. As ye are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Because this is what Christ, his death and resurrection this is what he was showing us. This is what baptism represents. It mm -hmm. represents you being a new lump. Let's go to uh, Romans 6. You know what? I'm sorry. Read verse 8, brother. I'm verse sorry eight. about that. Yes, sir. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. Listen, now, when we come together in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is coming up, Sometimes we don't understand that, hey, we ain't supposed to walk into the feast, that same old person. Not with old leaven. You're not supposed to be the same. You're not supposed to be the same gangster you was coming to the feast, the same whoremonger, the same liar. But we get caught up in the physical things. We get caught up in the food. We get caught up in the festivities. But understand, when you appear, you're not supposed to be that same person. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to come and be unleavened. But we don't get that sometimes. We think it's all about, we think it's all about the physical things, the fleshly things. But what the Lord is showing you is, hey, you supposed to come and be unleavened. That old man supposed to be gone. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But with this unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. But that's how you supposed to keep it with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. But some of us, when we get full, that old man come out. <laughs> he ain't supposed to. But this is how we're supposed to be observing this feast. That is what it is about, purging out that old leaven. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Romans 6, and we're going to pick it up in verse 3. And this is what baptism, when you truly understand what baptism represents, that's what it's all about. You are purging that body of sin, and you are coming up out the water a new creature. Romans 6, and we're going to pick it up. At verse 3, go ahead. 
Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Listen, he said, don't you understand that, hey, as many of us as, as were baptized into Jesus Christ was baptized into his death? Go ahead. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism, baptism into death. What is buried? That old man, the man that deal with the lust of the flesh, the man that don't care about sinning. That man is supposed to be buried with him. Go ahead. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. He said we should walk in a newness of life. The only way to do that is to purge out that old leaven. Purge out that old man. Go ahead. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall, also, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Uh -huh. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. He said our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. Because the body of sin or sin itself is corruption. And the book tells you that corruption does not inherit in corruption. We're going to read that later. So how is it that you could be corruptible and inherit the kingdom of God, which is incorruptible? It ain't going to work. You got to get rid of this body of sin. You have to mortify your members, as the book says. You have to kill this old man. Go ahead. That henceforth, we should not serve sin. And henceforth, we should not serve sin. Your whole life should not be based on serving sin and the lust of your flesh. Go ahead. For he that is dead is freed from sin. If that old man is truly dead, then you are free from sin. In other words, you can get eternal life. You have access to the tree of life because you have killed that old man and now you're free from sin. And the wages of sin is death. So you have access to the tree of life. But if that old man is not dead, then you're in bondage to sin. And if you're in bondage to sin, the result is death. Go ahead. Verse 8. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Listen, if you kill that old man, if you destroy that old, that old body of sin, just like Christ uh, uh, went in the ground, a, a flesh and blood body, and then he was raised again, living forever, then you got to believe that if, if we do the same thing, then we're going to live forever. We're going to get the same reward. We're going to get eternal life. Yeah, you're going to miss out on a few little things. Uh, uh, according to the flesh, but it ain't it 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 it, it ain't worth losing your salvation mm -hmm. just for a couple of little pleasures of the flesh. The book even tell you about about Moses how hey he 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 rather he rather suffer with his brethren than to enjoy you know a few few lusts of the flesh for 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 a hot minute uh, 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 in, in Egypt, but. This is the mentality we got to have. We got to have that mentality that, hey, denying ourselves, afflicting our souls, all of this, in the end, it's going to pay off and you're going to live forever. Mm -hmm. All the stuff you could do in this life ain't going to last forever because once we die, it's over with. Whatever you had, somebody else going to use it. Somebody else going to give it away. They're going to waste it. It ain't nothing you can do about it, but you still got to wake up and we got to answer for the things that we've done in this flesh. That's right. What verse was that? Verse 9. Go ahead. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Uh -huh. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our and, Lord. And that's the thing. Reckon yourselves, hey, to be dead unto sin. Don't look back and think, oh, man, I remember back in the day I used to do this and that. You missing something that's going to lead you to death. You shouldn't be missing that. That should be behind you. And we should be looking forward to eternal life. Let's go to um, Hebrews 9, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Hebrews 9, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service in a worldly sanctuary. Uh -huh. For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after that, the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all. Skip down to verse 6. 
Now then, these things were thus ordained. The priest went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year. And this was on the Day of Atonement, that the priest went behind that veil into the most holy place and made an atonement for all the sins of all the people for that year. Go ahead. Not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. Go ahead. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing, uh -huh. which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Because all these things were, were, were ordained under the, the uh, Levitical priesthood, but it could not make the one that did the service perfect pertaining to the conscience, simply because these, these were carnal ordinances. These were things that you physically had to go up there and do and it did nothing for the conscience. If you was a person who was a sinner, but you had enough livestock that you can bring up your offering, why you need to clean up your conscience for when you got bulls, goats, and lambs? You, get, you got enough to go up there and offer up a sacrifice. But now, under Christ, ain't no more sacrifice for sin. That's why Paul tell you that in Hebrews. He made one offering. Mm -hmm. So now either you gonna get your mind right or you going to die, because ain't no animals you can bring up to no priest, high priest after the order of Levi to make no sin offering for you. The sin offering been made. So now you have to make your conscience clean. Mm -hmm. You have to be righteous in the conscience, and you have to live the word of God. Ain't no easy out. This is why the Lord kicked him out the land. This is why he had Jeremiah write and Isaiah write about, hey, why you true? Who told you to tread my courts? You know, I'm tired of all these, the, the, the fat and, you know, the fat and rams and all of that because he knew the people didn't repent. Mm -hmm. They was just going through the motions because these, these were the, the, the uh, ordinances that they knew they had to perform, but the people didn't really repent. They didn't believe. They didn't seek righteousness. Mm -hmm. They was just going through the motions. Go ahead, bro. Verse 10 which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and cardinal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. Uh -huh. But Christ being come in high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, uh -huh. neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us. He entered, one, he entered once into the holy place. Not once a year, but once. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? He said now... If the sprinkling of, of, of the uh, 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 ashes of the heifer and the blood of bulls and goats, if that can if that can bring about sanctification of the flesh, he said, then how much more the blood of Christ? Mm -hmm. How much more can his blood do that when he purges your conscience from dead works? Again, purging. The example that the Lord left us was not something that was only carnal, but this was a spiritual thing. Purge your conscience. Mm -hmm. That's why when he started talking, that's why when he was talking to the people about not committing adultery or, or not doing no murder, he took it a step mm -hmm. further. You can't hate your brother without a cause. Mm -hmm. You can't look at a woman and, uh, and, and lust after in your heart, just in the mind, your mm -hmm. conscience. Yeah. You can't even do that in your conscience because you guilty, you in danger of the same judgment as the one who physically go out and commit adultery or physically go out and kill. Mm -hmm. Because he was trying to get them to see that it is about the inward man. That is what he was trying to get them to understand. You finished 14? Yeah. Okay. Let's go to uh, Hebrews 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go to Hebrews 10 and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, 
can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. Now we continue, he, he's continuing the same thing. Though Although he said the law, he let you know. He said the, those sacrifices mm -hmm. that they offered year by year continually, they can never make the ones who was doing them perfect because it was not a spiritual thing. It was a carnal ordinance. You sinned. <clears throat> And really, he was only supposed to sin out of ignorance. This was supposed to be done. But when you sin, you brought up this animal. You brought up this live, this bull or goat or whatever. And it was sight. The, the priest killed it and sprinkled the blood. But he said this could not make the comers down too perfect. But it was showing you for the time to come when that true sacrifice, which is the blood of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. was going to be manifested, which was going to give us back access to the tree of life. Go ahead. For then, would they not have ceased to be offered? He said, so now, if that, if, he said, for then, would they not have ceased to be offered? In other words, if, if this was sufficient, why did they stop being offered? And that's what people don't understand. People that reject Christ and say Christ ain't your, ain't your sin offering, but you, uh, why did those offerings stop being uh, uh, done? If they were sufficient, Mm -hmm. If they can make the ones who were doing them perfect, why did they cease to be offered? Mm -hmm. Why was the veil in the temple ripped in half when Christ died? Mm -hmm. Because that wasn't sufficient. Right. The blood of bulls and goats was not sufficient. Mm -hmm. Once the real sacrifice came, then that was the end of that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Because that the worshipers, once purged, should have had no more conscience of sin. See, if you are truly purged, then... You ain't, you ain't just going to keep continually going back doing the same old thing with no conscience, without feeling some kind of remorse, without some kind of repentance. He said, so if that was the case, then a worshiper should have had no more conscience of sins. In other words, it should have been a change in mind. Mm -hmm. Christ ain't going to die twice for you. So if you truly believe that he is your sin offering and he already did it, your conscience is going to be a little bit different. Cause hey, you know ain't no more sacrifice. So what? So what decision you gonna make? Decision you gonna make is I think I better try a little bit harder mm -hmm. to do right. Cause ain't no more sacrifice. That's good. Let's go to uh, Romans two, and we're gonna pick it up at verse twelve. Romans two, and we're gonna pick it up at verse twelve. We understand Paul. Paul said a lot of things. And some things he said, like the scripture tell you, it is hard to be understood. But Paul broke some things down that were really plain that we like to gloss over. People like to gloss over because they're looking for a reason not to have to do anything different than mm -hmm. what they've been doing their whole life. Mm -hmm. And if it was that easy... Would nobody go to the lake of fire? Would, would nobody burn nowhere? Right. If all you could do is say you believe, then you could just go keep living life how you want to. Who would, who, who would, who, who would go to the lake of fire? Nobody. Would nobody go? Mm -hmm. Romans 2, but we're going to see what Paul's going to say. Romans 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Romans 2 and verse 12. Go ahead. For as many as have sinned without law, shall also perish without law. So, hey, you don't want to deal with the law, don't worry about it. You're going to perish without it. Go ahead. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Uh-huh. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. But this is Paul saying this. Mm -hmm. This is Paul saying this. That's why you better pay attention. Paul says some things straight up plain. He's not. He's not speaking in parables. He's not He's not speaking of allegories. He's telling you straight up. He said, not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law. Go ahead. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law. When the Gentiles, who were not brought up because the Lord told Israel, I'm going to punish you because you, you only have I known amongst the nations. He said that in the prophets. He told them, you the, only, you the ones I know. Therefore, I'm going to punish you for being disobedient. But what he's saying is, look, the Gentiles, hey, they didn't, they didn't know God like Israel knew him. Mm -hmm. They didn't know the law of God, the statutes of God like Israel knew him because the Lord, the Lord made Israel a nation of priests. He said, but 
the Gentiles which have not the law, go ahead. Do by nature the things contained in the law. He said, but they do by nature the things contained in the law. But then that goes back again to the new covenant. He said he going to write his laws in your mind and in your heart, right? Mm -hmm. But he said, look, they do the things contained in the law by nature. Go ahead. These, having not the law, are a law unto themselves. That's why ain't nobody going to get away. I know people like to say, well, you know, what if somebody don't know? Listen, you know how I feel to have something that you work for get stolen. Right. You know how I feel, right? It's a terrible feeling. If somebody go and commit adultery with, 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 your, with your spouse, you know how that feel, don't you? So I don't care if you can't read. You know it's, you know it's something wrong with it because of your reaction. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. This is why the Lord is saying, hey, they do by nature the things contained in the law. That's why ain't no man going to get away. Go ahead. Verse 15. Which show the, work, show the work of the law written in their hearts. He said, which show the work of the law written in their hearts. Go ahead. Their conscience also bearing witness. Again, their conscience also bearing witness because this is where the Lord want to change you from the inside. He wants to change your way of thinking. He said, their conscience also bearing witness. Go ahead. And their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. That's good. Let's go to John 15. And we're going to pick it up in verse 1. John 15 and verse 1. See, the Lord put this in you. He put, the, he put this law, his laws and statutes in you. And no matter how you try to dance, <clears throat> he's telling you they do by nature the things contained in the law. So how you going to get around that? John 15, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now he said, look, every branch hey, that, that, that bear fruit, he said he purgeth it. He cleans it up, that it may bring forth more fruit. This is how the process goes. It don't stop at faith. You believe, that's, that's the beginning. And once faith is established, now the Lord got to purge you. Mm -hmm. He got to purge out that old man. So now that you can, you can bring forth even more fruit. And without that happening, we can't bring forth fruit unto righteousness without being purged. Mm -hmm. Every man got to go through this. Let's go to uh, 2 Timothy 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 14. 2 Timothy 2, and we're going to pick it up in verse 14. Because we all have to be purged. Because we got a whole lot of, like Paul said, that sin that dwelleth in me. We got a whole lot of sin. We got a whole lot of foolishness on the brain that we've been dealing with our whole life. They got to be purged. Plus the things, plus the temptations and, and the lust of the flesh that's going to always be present with men. All of that has to be purged. 2 Timothy 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 14. Go ahead. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but the, to the subverting of the hearers. Go ahead. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh -huh. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Oh, yeah. And their word will eat us as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenius and Philetus. Skip down to verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these. He said now, if a man therefore purge himself from these. He, oh, yeah. he should be a vessel unto honor, uh -huh. sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. You notice how this all started with a man purging himself from these? Mm -hmm. First he said, do that. Then you're going to be a vessel unto honor. You ain't a vessel unto honor because you know how to sing, sing to the Lord, or because you, you got the best suits and dresses when you come to church and, and you know, you look like uh, you look like you're a superstar. 
don't none of that matter if you do not purge yourself from the things that the Lord say you're not supposed to be partaking in. He say, then you're going to be a vessel on the honor, sanctified. After you purge yourself, you are not sanctified just because you believe in Christ Jesus and you say he is your Lord and Savior. That is just the first step. That is just the, your foot getting in the door. But what you going to do now? Because after that, you got to be purged. I got to be purged. And this just takes time. It takes time. It's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to take your whole life. But he said, then you're going to be meat for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Let's go to um, Isaiah 6. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Because we want to see what he did with the prophet Isaiah. Notice he said, if a man purge himself from these, then he could be a vessel in the honor, prepared on every good work. Well, this is what happened with Isaiah. Isaiah 6, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. Go ahead. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Now, watch what he's going to say. Go ahead. Then said I, Woe is me. For I am undone. He said, look, woe is me, for I am undone. Because he knew who he was in the presence of. He wasn't worthy to be there. He knew he wasn't clean enough. He understood that, man, I shouldn't, I'm, I'm in the wrong spot. Go ahead. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Hey, he said, look, I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people with unclean lips. He ain't crying, he ain't hollering, you know, he holier than thou. He said, man, I, I'm undone because I got, I'm un, I got, a, I got unclean lips and I, all my people got unclean lips. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For mine eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Go ahead. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. Uh -huh. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips. And thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Again, he said, now, your iniquity is taken away, and your sin purged. Notice, he has been purged from his sin. Now, he's meat for the master's use. Go ahead. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Now, he's ready to go. Mm-hmm. Because, hey, his sin, his, his iniquity was, was taken away. His sin was purged. But in the beginning, he said, look, I'm a man of unclean lips. Mm -hmm. But once the Lord purged him, he said, now who going to go for us? And he said, hey, I, I can go. Mm -hmm. Lord, don't send no any old body. He don't send swindlers, <laughs> pimps, and all of that. I don't care how good they dress, how well they speak. Lord, don't send anybody. Mm -hmm. He don't call no anybody. Just, just, just off the hip, you know, whoever. You got to be purged. We have to be clean mm -hmm. to be meat for the master's use. Right. In righteous way, you can always be used for wicked. You know, you like wicked, like Judas. Yeah, you like to do that. Okay, I'm gonna use you to do what you do anyway. Mm -hmm. You a thief? I'm gonna have you. I'm gonna have you steal. Don't worry about it. But if we talking about being a servant for the ministry, then yeah, just like Isaiah was, hey, our iniquity got to be clean. We got to be, sins got to be purged. Mm -hmm. That is the process. Let's go to uh, Ezekiel 20, and we're going to pick it up at verse 30. Ezekiel 20, and we're going to pick it up at verse 30. Ezekiel 20, and we're going to pick it up at verse 30. 
When you get it, go ahead. Wherefore, say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Are ye polluted after the manner of your fathers, and commit ye whoredom after their abominations? For when ye offer your gifts, when ye make your sons to pass through the fire, ye pollute yourselves with all your idols, even unto this day. And shall I be inquired of by you, O house of Israel? As I live, saith the Lord God, I would not be inquired of by Look, you. Look, he's letting them know. He's saying, you doing, uh, 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 you doing just like your fathers. You causing your children to pass through the fire. You, you polluted with all your idols. But now you want to come, you want to come talk to me <laughs> and inquire me, and ask me something. Lord, say I ain't gonna be inquired of you. This is what we don't understand sometimes. You can't go out there and do all the sin you could do to you just tired and then. Now you want to go and be, be holy. Lord, hear my cry. Okay. Well, the Lord, you can't play with him. He letting them know, I ain't going to be inquired of you. What, you. what you trying to inquire him for? Go ask your idols mm -hmm. that you so in love with. <laughs> don't, ask, don't, don't ask him. Go ask your idols. See if they answer you. Go ahead. 32. And that which cometh into your mind should not be at all. See, now he now now he's talking about future time. Yeah, he's talking about at the time when Christ's gonna come and set up his kingdom on this earth, and he's gonna gather all Israel, and he's gonna bring them through the wilderness, just like in the days of old. But he's letting them know this is what's gonna happen. Go ahead. That ye say, we will be as the heathen, as the families of the country. See, that ain't gonna happen no more. We ain't going to be like the nations. You ain't going to do everything they tell you you're supposed to do on TV. You ain't going to do that. You just ain't going to follow whatever somebody tell you is the end thing to do. Because that's what we do. Israel follow anything. Mm -hmm. They don't even care if it's right or wrong. We want to be included. Yeah, but it's wicked. Don't matter. We want to be included. <laughs> we don't even think. He said, but you, this, at this time, this ain't going to happen. You ain't gonna, you not gonna, you ain't gonna say in your mind that, yeah, we gonna be like the heathen. Go ahead. To serve wood and stone. Uh huh. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. See, he say, look, with fury poured out, he gonna rule over you because that's what Israel need. They need a, a, a beat down to do right. <laughs> he said, with fury poured out, he gonna rule over you. This ain't going to be no, hey, you know, you think if you got time, you know, you could have a holy convocation on the Sabbath. You think uh, after you get done with them baby back ribs, you could stop eating pork. It ain't going to be like that. With fury poured out, the Lord is going to reign over you. Go ahead. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered. See, Israel is still scattered. He said, I'm going to bring you out. From the people, and will gather you out of all the countries where you are scattered. Go ahead. With a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. See, this has not happened. The Lord has not recovered Israel with fury poured out. Israel is still scattered. Go ahead. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. Hey, and he said, I'm going to bring you into the wilderness of the people. Go ahead. And there will I plead with you face to face. Uh huh. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. See, this is future. He said, I'm going to bring you back into this wilderness. Just, and I'm going to plead with you face to face, just like I did with your fathers when he brought them out of Egypt. This has not happened yet. Go ahead. So will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. And I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. See, you're going to be under covenant. Mm -hmm. You're going to come under this covenant. You are not going to get away. You are not just going to go and say, hey, I serve God according to, you know, what's in my heart. That ain't going to work. you going to come under the bond of this covenant or else you're going to die. Go ahead. And I will purge out from among you the rebels. Oh, so here we go. He said, I'm going to purge out from among you the rebels. Because that's how we like to be. You know, you like to be rebellious and feel good. You feel free. Feel like you're doing something special. But at this time, being a rebel against the, uh, against the word of God, against the Lord, is going to get you cut off. He say, look, I'm going to purge out the rebels from among you. You just ain't going to mosey on into that promised land mm -hmm. being whoever you want to be and acting how you want to be. 
if you don't fall in line, if we don't fall under the bond of this covenant, you're going to get purged out. Go ahead. And them that transgress against me. Uh -huh. I will bring them forth out of the countries where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. See, yeah, you're going to come out of them countries you you, you living in, but you, you ain't going to get in the land, though. No. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't come under the bond of the covenant, and God is a God that deals with covenants, then you don't belong to him. And if you want to rebel... Hey, you, you, you ain't got no part in this land. Go ahead. And you should know that I am the Lord. That's good. So we see that the Lord is going to purge out the rebels at the time appointed. Because this has to happen. Mm -hmm. Either we're going to purge ourselves with the word of God, or in the end, you're going to get purged out for being disobedient. Let's go to uh, Hebrews 6. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Hebrews 6, and we going to pick it up at verse 1. Hebrews 6, and we going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. Therefore, leave in the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, and a faith toward God. He said, now look, moving on unto perfection. In other words, not going back and having to repent and repent over again and keep on repenting from something that we're supposed to be done with. Let us move on to perfection. Then he tell Abraham, I am the Lord God, walk before me and be thou perfect. Yep. That's what he commands. He ain't tell you to uh, just, you know, repent as many times as you feel like. Mm -hmm. The Lord is long-suffering. He is merciful. But what he requires is what he requires. Right. And Paul is telling you, okay, you got the, doc you got the principles of the doctrine of Christ. That's good. Okay, now let's move on to perfection. Mm -hmm. Let's get past level one. Mm -hmm. Let's move on. Go ahead. Of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. See, now Paul is talking about doing some other things. Because this is what this whole walk is about. It is about growing, like the book says, growing in grace. Getting more and more, purging out that old man, and becoming more and more like Christ. Let's go to uh, 2 Peter, the first chapter. 2 Peter, the first chapter, and we're going to pick it up in verse 5. Second Peter, the first chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 5. Go ahead. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, uh -huh. having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. See, he's telling you, look, be, this, is, this is what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be looking forward to being partakers of the divine nature. That means living forever and escaping the corruption that is in the world through lust because that's where corruption for the most part it comes through it comes through when you lust or covet after things it causes men to sin and do mm -hmm. whatever they can to get it but he say this is this is we supposed to have escaped this go ahead and beside this giving all diligence Add to your faith virtue. Now look, he's gonna run. He's gonna run this down. He said, "Add to your faith virtue," because faith is the beginning. You gotta at least have faith. But he say, "Now add to your faith virtue." Go ahead. And to virtue knowledge. And to virtue knowledge. He didn't say have faith and no knowledge. Go ahead. And to knowledge temperance. And to knowledge temperance. And to temperance patience. Uh huh. And to patience godliness. Uh huh. And to godliness brotherly kindness. Uh huh. And to brotherly kindness charity. You see how all of these things build upon the the, the other one. It mm -hmm. starts with faith, but in the end, hey, it's supposed to end up you got real charity, brotherly love. But you got to have all these things. We got to have all these things, not just faith. Mm -hmm. Not just knowledge, but no brotherly love. Mm -hmm. He's telling you all of these things. Go ahead. For if these things be in you and abound, 
They make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. See, he say the one that lacketh these things don't forget that he was purged from his old sins. Mm -hmm. You don't forget when you lack these things. So we got to have all these things. It's not just one characteristic you got to have. It ain't just faith. It's not just knowledge. But it's all of these things. This is how we are fruitful. This is how we can continue to be purged. And this is how you are converted into a vessel of honor. It is by having these. Let's go to uh, 2 Timothy, the third chapter. And we're going to pick it up in verse 1. 2 Timothy, the third chapter. And we're going to pick it up in verse 1. Go ahead. This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, bolsters, <clears throat> proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, uh -huh. having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Yeah, somebody can have a form of godliness, but that don't mean that they are godly, but he say from such, look, you turn away. Go ahead. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, mm -hmm. ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. He said ever learning and never <laughs> able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You know why? Because they lacking the things that they need to be a profitable servant. You might have a form of godliness, but you don't have nothing else. No virtue, no patience, no temperance. No brotherly, no brotherly love. No check. You don't have none of that. So you gonna always be learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You know people like that. They read a thousand books, but they still never come to the knowledge of the truth. Yeah. And it's amazing, man. How could you not? They read the Bible back and forth, but it, it just don't register. Mm -hmm. Because when you lacking the things that the Lord say you gotta have then you can't be fruitful. He say, but these people stay away from. Somebody always got a new doctrine, stay away from. Them. You mm -hmm. got a new doctrine every three months. You got something new. Go ahead, man. That's the end of that. What, uh, let's go to uh, mm -hmm. Romans. Uh, let's go to Romans 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 17. Romans 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 17. When you get it, Go ahead. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. So now Paul say, look, you a Jew, you got, you got the knowledge, you instructed out of the law, you know the more excellent things, go ahead. And art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, and light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. He said, you got all that. You got the form of knowledge and you know the truth of the law, but guess what? Go ahead. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? He said, you're going to teach somebody else, but you're not going to teach yourself again. This is when you don't have all the things that the Lord say you're supposed to have. You ain't worried about purging yourself. You're trying to purge everybody else. You trying you out there trying to convert everybody else except for yourself. Go ahead. Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Now that's why Paul told them, look, the ones that the ones that's constraining you to be circumcised, they doing it to have a fair show in the flesh so they can boast in your flesh. He said, but the ones that's telling you that, they don't keep the law either. Go ahead. Thou that makest thy boast of the law, 
through breaking the law dishonors thou God? Yeah, you're going to boast about the law, but through breaking the law, now you're dishonoring God. Go ahead. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. He say, look. The name, uh, name of the Lord is blasphemy because of you, the one who are, who are, who are guide to the blind, mm -hmm. the one who, who got the knowledge and all of that. Mm -hmm. He said, you ain't going to teach yourself. Let's go to uh, Hebrews 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Hebrews 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10. When you get it, brother, go ahead. Called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be un uh, uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. Uh -huh. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Because a whole lot of people want to be a teacher, you want to be heard, but he say the time when you should be a teacher, somebody need to go back and teach you the first principles. <laughs> go ahead. And are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. He say, look, you become one, you need milk again. Go ahead. For every one that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Uh -huh. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. These are the ones that's been walking the walk, they being purged, they being converted. So they 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 are on a different level. Let's go to uh Matthew 18 and pick it up at verse 1. Matthew 18, and we're gonna pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. He said, Look, unless ye, except ye be converted, and become as little children, he say, look, you're not going to enter to the kingdom of heaven again. You got to be purged. You got to be converted. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians 15, and we're going to pick it up at verse 50. 1 Corinthians 15, and we're going to read verse 50. And we're going to read uh, 53. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 50. Go ahead. Now this I say, brethren. The flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. He say, look, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Go ahead. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. People don't understand that corruption doth not inherit incorruption. Skip down to verse 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. And that's the way it is. Corruption doth not inherit incorruption. Let's go to uh, Colossians 3. Let's go to Colossians 3, and we going to read verse 10. Colossians 3, and we're going to read verse 10. Can you get it, brother? Go ahead. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. That's good. So he say, look, I'm sorry, you know what? Read, start at verse 9. Go ahead. Lie not one to another. Seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. And we talked about that earlier, putting off that old man. Go ahead. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created because him. Because we're supposed to be renewed in knowledge, but after the image of Christ, not be renewed in the image of your past or the image of some other person. You're supposed to be renewed in the image of Christ. Put on the new man. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Romans 8. Let's go to Romans 8. We got, we, we got a few more minutes. Let's go to Romans 8. Mm -hmm. Get them off. And we're going to pick it up at verse 18. Romans 8. And we're going to pick it up at verse 18. Go ahead. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Uh-huh. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. And that's what we're waiting on, the manifestation of the sons of God, not the manifestation of your Maserati or your <laughs> Mercedes. you waiting on the manifestation of the sons of God when you're going to be a fellow heir with Christ, mm -hmm. when you're going to inherit the kingdom of God. That's what we're waiting on. Right. Everything else is something according to the flesh, and it ain't according to the, the will of God. Go ahead. 
For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Uh -huh. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption. Didn't we just read corruption does not inherit in corruption? So the creature got to be delivered from the bondage of corruption. Go ahead. Into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Liberty, freedom of the children of God. You free from death. You free from sin. You going to live forever. This is what we waiting on. The manifestation of the sons of God. Skip down to verse 28. Go ahead. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God mm -hmm. and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Uh, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. He said, and this is what he's trying to let you know. Look, he's going to be the firstborn among many brethren. The ones that he knew, hey, he predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. You have been purged and you have been converted, truly, 100%. You're going to be like Christ. You're going to have an inheritance. Mm -hmm. Let's go to uh, <clears throat> Colossians 1, and we're going to pick it up in verse 12. Colossians 1, and we're going to pick it up in verse 12. This is why we have to be purged and converted. Converted is not only just a change in the mind, but it is also in the end when you're going to take this corruptible body off and put on an incorruptible right. body and live forever. Mm -hmm. But first, we got to go through the process. First, we got to purge out that old man. And we got to slowly over time be converted to be found worthy, mm -hmm. to be a partaker of Christ in, his, in its fullness, being a fellow heir. That's what this whole walk is about. Colossians 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Go ahead. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. And he said, look, who have delivered us from the power of darkness, and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. That is what it's all about, being translated into the kingdom of his dear son. One more place. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 4. And we're going to read verse 16. 2 Corinthians 4. And we're going to read verse 16. Go ahead. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Notice he said, the inward man is renewed day by day. This renewing is a constant thing. This purging and this conversion is an everyday thing because the inward man is renewed day by day until the time of salvation. So that is my lesson, the purge and the conversion. We thank you for joining us here on the Word of Truth. We hope you'll tune in with us next week. And as always, please read your Bibles and keep the commandments of God. Thank you, and have a good evening.